So I guess this is just the way it goes. Um, I, I'm going to start with this car for my example. It looks a lot better since I I painted the grill chrome and I painted the lights on the, um, the headlights and the tail lights. I gotta touch up that spot right there, but um, uh, so like some of them I've already like I painted the tail lights on that. A lot of them are just lights. The only two I didn't do anything with is these two, and that's because these two are worth quite a bit of money, so I didn't want to mess with them. I'll show those last because they're gonna take a while. So uh, we're gonna start with this one. This is an Ertl. It's a Chevy of some kind. I said Caprice in the original video, but I'm thinking more Monte Carlo, possibly. It's a 1980. There you go on the bottom. I'm not good at pretending like I don't know what this stuff is. Like, I can't give you the same reactions I had the first time, so I'm not going to try. I'm just telling, I'm just saying it like it is. This is the Gatorade Thirst Quencher. Number 88. I don't know who was running 88 at that time, but uh, I could have looked it up, but I didn't. A little one-seater NASCAR, obviously. I'd like to find, um, I'm sure Ertl has quite a few of this uh, cars released with this uh or the, the, this car released, I can't talk. Uh, I'd like to find one that was just a regular one, you know, maybe not a NASCAR. But the NASCAR's cool. I like the old stock cars like that, NASCARs, whatever. This truck here, I think is pretty cool. Um, because it's different. It's a Subway, I don't say promotional vehicle, it doesn't really promote them. But, um... One of those Subway, uh, kind of Happy Meal-like things. I know Happy Meal's for McDonald's, but it's one of their things, you know, the toy comes in it. That's what this was. From 1998. I like the graphics on this, and it's an old, uh, Chevy Stepside 70s model. So, uh, I thought that was pretty cool. Something kind of odd I noticed about this truck, though is it's got one seat in it like it would like it's a, a race truck or something so I don't know I don't know what's up with that but I thought it was pretty cool those tiny little headlights were hard to paint you know you look at them versus the headlights in this other Chevy which they're supposed to be the same truck but um, you can see how much smaller the ones are in this one, they're they're more set back in the more set back in the uh, grill too, like they're supposed to be. So we're gonna go with the other square body Chevy. Again, this is a '70s era. This is a Yat Ming. Um, and whenever I do the reviews of the bigger, like 118th scale Yat Mings, I always mention. That Yat Ming makes the Chevy step sides. These are the Chevy step sides I'm talking about, the little 164th scale ones. And that's just because that's the ones I typically think of. You know, they're the old 70s Chevy step sides. And I intentionally I bought this truck because uh, oh, each of these cars except for the, the limos and the bus were more expensive. But um, the rest of these were all 50 cents a piece. So feel like I did pretty good. Reason, the intention, the intentional reason I bought this truck was because this truck I'm redoing here, um, well, it's got a few problems with it, but, um, the base for it's broken half. You know, I could glue this back together real easily, sure, but, um, it's gonna have a weak spot in it truck probably won't roll like it's supposed to because of this so uh, I may have to um, 
may have to use this black piece off of here. But um, this one's got the metal base on it. A lot of these Yapming trucks look just like this, but they've got a plastic base on them, a plastic chassis. So the plastic chassis fit a little differently on the trucks. So I couldn't use one on this one. So I bought this to take apart, and then the very next guy I went to, like, Two minutes after I left the vendor that I bought these cars from had one of these trucks that um, didn't have any wheels on it. It was, uh, he said it was for like, a, he, you could do a custom or something with it. And I said, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. I've been looking for the base for one of these. And um, so he kind of gave me a deal on it since I told him I'd been hunting around for one. The truck, these trucks on eBay for some reason are little pricey but this one is 50 cents it's got some chips in the paint but overall it's in okay shape I think that plastic piece that I was talking about on the chassis is kinda of broke off in this truck because um, these th those wheels shouldn't do that or it might have that piece but these have came out from under it so either way I hate taking these old cars apart because the um, rivets stick up instead of going down like a more modern that's old. Okay, this one's also old, but most of the rivets, or mushrooms is actually what they're called, um, go down, you know, like that, dip in. These bulge out. That makes the uh, drill bit want to wobble all over them unless you um, make a little dip in them. But uh, this nice truck says Chevrolet on the tailgate. Tailgate opens. And um, I really like these graphics on the, the hood. I think that's cool. It fits the truck good, I think. I, lo I love these 70s grills on those trucks. So I will put this away so I don't lose the pieces to it. Got another old Chevy. This is a Xylomex Chevy van ambulance. It says ambulance van on the bottom, but um, I'd say this is probably from the 70s. Um, it's in overall in good shape. The sirens are busted off of the uh, top of it. But, um, other than the lights being a little bashed off of it it's in pretty good shape it's got a few little chips you know around the corners and stuff but the uh, label on the side still readable and it is a sticker so you know that stuff uh, it gets rubbed off it um, fades out you know this still pretty vibrant red on this one it's about a 76 Chevy something like that Let's go with this. This I think is really cool. Steam tractor. And um, I'm going to try again to read the front of this. The bottom, I believe, says Northampton. I can't read what it says on the top. But, um, anyway, I think this is really cool. It's extremely detailed. Um, maybe not, uh, paint-wise, but if you look, this is all, it's all metal. It's all casted in there. But you can see, watch, um, I keep dropping it. You can see the, um, bar going through there. <laughs> something I else I noticed the camera probably won't pick up on it can you guys see that pin in the uh, back of the tractor right there that pin right there the hole behind that pins punched out um, this tractor probably had a top on it that's probably what that that hole right there is for most of these uh, steam tractors at least in real life had a kind of a canopy that went over the top of them. This also might have been a gear 
a lot of them had a, a not a gear, but a, fl a flywheel that was up there. So. Could have been a flywheel. I don't know. But um, it's a nice looking tractor anyway, and the, the wheels are metal, two wheels are die cast. Rolls pretty good too. And something really cool I noticed about this was it's a Lesney. Lesney number one. Which is so cool. I didn't know that was a Lesney when I bought it. I'm going to go with another Lesney. This is a Caterpillar B8. D D8. Good grief. But, um... Again, a lot of these old bulldozers are missing their tracks or anything that's got rubber tracks on it. They're missing because they get brittle, they break, they get hot, they kind of melt a little bit. Some of them just get loose and then they don't stay on the, the wheels. And since they roll without the tracks on them, just fine. It's not, it's not a huge deal. There you can see these old Lesneys are really detailed, <clears throat> which I've noticed before. But after that steam tractor, I'll probably pay even more attention to their details because that steam tractor is definitely the most detailed one I've seen. This, uh, this is number 18, made by Lesney Caterpillar D8 regular trademark bulldozer. A little seat up there. Okay. So that's cool. Uh, so I feel like everything in here is well worth 50 cents. This is probably worth about 50 cents, but the rest of this stuff I'm sure is worth more than that. Um, this is a nice looking car, but I think it's 50 cents because it's really not made all that well. Now, in the original video, I guessed that this was a Duesenberg or, what else did I say? Anyway, that wasn't right. This is a Packard, a 35 Packard Coupe Roadster. With me being in Indiana, um, even though the Packards were made right across the river in Ohio, um, I'm used to seeing Duesenbergs, you know, and it's got a real long nose on it like a Duesenberg, so that's kind of what led me to think it was a Duesenberg at first. But, um, it's a nice looking car. I colored in the grill and painted the headlights, but, um, you know, this is kind of a mass produced car, I feel like. Um, all of these are, but like, cheap cheaply mass produced I should say because you can see where the paint gets thin where the body curves down and um, everything's basically cast into this plastic here except for the metal body the red everything in red is the only metal part of it but it does look very nice on the shelf so that's okay and I have a feeling there's no brand on the bottom of this, just as made in Hong Kong. But I have a feeling it's made by High Speed or one of those uh, brands like that because uh, just the way it's made, it's very reminiscent of a uh, High Speed brand uh, model. This here, I have a feeling, is worth quite a bit of money on eBay, or you could get quite a bit of money on eBay for it. Because for some reason these uh, Nissan Skylines have went through the roof in popularity recently. Um, at least the little models. Um, Everett Hot Wheels has made one. M2's made one. Uh, Johnny Lightning made one. I don't know if Johnny Lightning made one. Um, Matchbox made Everybody is basically making these Skylines. So... This Tomica here um, is probably was it was probably made around. This was probably made in the 70s, I should say. Um, I was gonna say it was made around the time these cars were popular. I want to say it's a, a stupid button. This is a 71. 
Do I still have my mirror in there? Yes, I do. If you buy these M2s, make sure you don't break the mirror off. I've glued that mirror on twice. I hate those mirrors. But the cards look better with them on. So, anyway, these skylines are super popular for customizers and collectors. Um, guys are all happy about them on eBay or on uh, YouTube, I should say. Uh, when, you know, when they find them at swap meets or on eBay. So, this has a nice red interior in it. I have a feeling this would be worth a pretty penny on eBay just because so a bunch of people would probably bid it, uh, bid it up um, you know customizers and stuff and this would be a good candidate for a customization or a restoration because it's not in very good shape at all right now but it certainly has potential I could probably trade for something pretty good uh, with this car if I found somebody that was looking for one but this is a Skyline HT 2000 GTR racing so this is a racing model you can see the doors open the wheels are all wobbled up jacked up on them but I can either fix that or um, or I can't fix the axles but I can put new axles in it been a long time on that one. I'll try to go through these other ones quicker. This is an old Lesney uh, models of yesteryear, and um, it's been painted, <laughs> which is probably why it was in the 50 cent basket. And um, in the previous video, I said this was a Franklin. That's not true. This is not a Franklin. This is a, a 25 Morris Cow Cowley Bullnose number eight and um, it just kind of looks like a Franklin for to me for some reason but um, I can see Morris in it too anyway the uh, fender on this one's been in this wheel doesn't hardly spin very good but, um, these yesteryear cars are fun to customize if they're in bad shape like this because you can paint them pretty much however you want. Personally, I agree with the person that painted this, that mustard gold, whatever color that is, with uh, saddle brown fenders, looks pretty good. It opens up. Not sure why it pushes in, but it opens up. I don't know anything about Morris's, so I have a feeling that's supposed to flip out the other way, though. I don't know. But they even painted over the spare tire, which looks kind of silly, but whatever. It's a nice little car. That one feels very light for some reason. Uh, compared to the other yesteryear cars, it seemed kind of light. Got a 40... 849 Ford somewhere in there uh, Ford pickup Wiley E. Coyote he's the character in Looney Tunes that chases after the Roadrunner and um, the headlights were yellow on it but that looked kind of silly so I painted them white and painted the uh, turn signals in the appropriate place the Surely he's supposed to have pupils. I feel like you can see where this uh, paint gets rubbed through on these trucks. Or this is probably a mice. Or this is a racing champions. That's right. But regardless, I would hope that the ink or the paint, whatever, got rubbed off. And that's why he doesn't have pupils. Because he sure looks weird without pupils. Got pupils there, right there. So I don't know. I've not seen these wheels from Racing Champions on anything else. But this is street wheels. 
This is a 1940, what's that say, 48, probably, 1948 Ford PU, which I assume PU stands for pickup, I don't know, let's go with another Ford, this is a nice coupe, cream white Auto Alliance. This car, I was surprised this was in the 50 cent box. Because this is a nice car. And the hood opens. A detailed engine in it. Accurate. It's Ford engine. Hood doesn't close very good, but it stays open nice. I didn't paint the taillights on it. Taillights were already painted, which made it easier for me. Still got the windshield, too. A lot of times those windshields get broke off. This is a 37 Ford. Yeah, let's look at a John Deere tractor. An old Ertl. Ertl never puts the years on anything. The years aren't stamped on the smaller vehicles. Not usually. So, uh, don't know exactly what year this is, but I have kind of an idea. Um, number one, because of the logo, style of the tractor, and even though there's no number on there, um, I can pretty much tell what model this tractor is. So, uh, here's something I wish Ertl would go back to. See how the, uh, front wheels pivot so much just like the real tractors anymore even with their older tractors they don't make their front wheels swing back and forth pivot like that they may pivot but they only do a little bit some things I like about the newer Ertles more than the old ones some of them the old ones are better in this case the old ones are better again 50 cent box this doesn't even have any chips in the paint not even on the top of the smokestack that's the most typical spot to get a chip off the paint. And the late, ah, the Majorette Limousine. I think I've never quite found out. Um, looks kind of like a Cadillac from the back. It's a Cadillac or a Lincoln Town Car Limousine, one of the two. Probably Cadillac. Um, this club limo on the front. If you've never seen one of these cars, they're pretty common at like uh, swap meets and stuff for, you know, model cars. Um, Flor it's got a Florida license plate on the back. This one still has the sunroof in it. A lot of times these sunroofs get busted out. Take a look in there if you want to. Looks like there's a spider web dangling around in there. Pardon my runny nose, it's just allergies, but, um, I bought this car, it was 50 cents, so I was going to buy it anyway, but, um, I bought it because it still has the, um, antenna on the back of it. A lot of these boomerang-shaped antennas, the tips of them get busted off, and then you're left with a little white square coming up out of the back of the car. This one happened to still have the antenna. Although it is missing the passenger side door, I'm redoing one of these right now, or I'm in the process of redoing it, and I'll probably take this car apart and put the antenna on it, so it'll probably turn into a parts limousine, which is okay, because I find enough of these limousines that um, might, be, might be good to have a parts one laying around. So there's the video. Oh, I got the, got the corgi, got the corgis left. This is the inner city mini bus. It's extremely futuristic looking. I think even this was probably made in the 70s, but even now, I feel like this looks pretty futuristic. I mean, at least around here, I know we don't have any buses that look like this. It's like a Jetsons type of bus. 
you know, kind of space age type of thing. But, um, this is pretty old. It was only three bucks. That's why I got it. I thought it was a uh, Matchbox Super Kings at first. Especially those wheels look like Matchbox wheels. But I flipped it over and I was surprised to find out it was a Corgi. Corgi minibus made in Great Britain. Uh, this one's got a bit of a crack in the uh, side window there. But I like these windows. They're cool. It's got a nice... Do that door looks like it opens up in the back, but it doesn't. It's just the way they've... Uh, Oh, what's the word? The way they press the uh, imprint of the door there, it looks like it opens, but it doesn't. Rolls good, though. Maybe not as good as a Matchbox uh, Super Fast, but I still think they look like Super Fast wheels. Which is what Matchbox called their version of these wheels. So now we got the um, valuable Corgis. I will start with this one, which is the one I was going to buy first. This car is really cool for a number of different reasons, but um, I'm going to start off by saying I found this car on eBay a few months ago. It was like $75, and I'll show you what it does in a second, but there's no way I was going to pay that for it on top of shipping. This was only twenty dollars. It was twenty dollars at um, the toy show. I bought stuff from the guy before, so I got him down to uh, fifteen on it. I was so happy to find this car. This is the Corgi Mercedes Benz six hundred Pullman. Another Corgi. All Corgis are made in Great Britain. But this one's got uh, rubber tires on it. The paint's in good fairly good shape this side's a little chipped up but um i mean for the most part it's in good shape for not having the box um you know this one's been played with a little bit but it's it's not wore out is what i'm getting at it's got nice little windshield wipers in there um nice interior And uh, then I, I love the back end on this car. I don't know why, but something about this long, this trunk looks long when you look at it from the from the very back. I don't know. I love this red color too. I think that makes it even more appealing than its valuable, the its value and what it does. So I'm gonna turn this switch to on and watch that little yellow gear come closer to the brass gear. Okay, it's on now. See, they're turning. The gear's supposed to be all wobbly like that. So, I'm going to zoom in on the headlights and spin that back wheel. This is, uh, what scale are they calling this car? I don't know, it's, uh, it's um... Little, little bigger than this. Alright, this is a 158th scale. So, eh, roughly 150th scale, somewhere in there. Maybe not quite that big, but, um, anyway, the, it's a small model, and the, um, windshield wipers are functional on it. And, I'm only going to show you on one, because... I don't, you'll get the idea. The window, rear windows go down in this car. This one got stuck in the first video. Okay, well, you see this one goes down. Turn it upside down. This car is making me look like an idiot. See, it went up. There, you can see it went down. This other one is a little stuck for some reason. Only thing that's really wrong with this car is you can see the steering wheel rolling around in there. But other than the steering wheel, it's uh, 
in good shape, and I love how the windshield wipers move. It rolls good, too. Um, I'm going to zoom in on that. See the windshield wipers moving? I think that's cool. A lot of cars nowadays, um, a lot of toy cars don't really do stuff like that. Or they, if they do, it's all electronically powered. Turn the switch the right way. So, this is all mechanical, you know, it's just gears and stuff. Got another old Corgi. This one I had not seen before, although I'd never really looked for it. I knew this car was old when I saw, I, I picked it up and I could tell it was heavy, but, I mean, it just, it looks old by looking at it, but. It's got jewel headlights in it. Let me angle it. Angle. There, you can kind of see them sparkle. I'm not in real good lighting, so... Uh, if I turn this car, you can kind of see the light sparkle. My camera, for some reason, won't pick up the jeweled headlights very well. But you can kind of see where they're sparkly like that. Uh, jeweled headlights are a real good indication that the toy you're looking at's pretty old. And um, this is a Lincoln Continental limousine. So this this is a very very long car in real life. If you've seen a Lincoln Continental, <laughs> the Lincoln Continental itself is pretty large. It's very detailed interior. It's got the suicide doors in the back. Interior is a bit dirty, but for the most part, it's okay. And the uh, top on this car is painted, and then it's kind of textured so that it's more like a vinyl top, as this car would have had in real life. Now, if you open up the trunk on this car. There's felt inside of this trunk. I don't want to touch the felt a lot because it's real old, so, you know, it's starting to come off in a few places. But there is felt, you know, like if you get a, a ring or something, and the inside of that box has that felt stuff in it, crushed velvet or felt. That's exactly what's in the back of this car. Is I'm going to say crushed velvet is probably what it is, but... So there's crushed velvet. Corgi makes a limo that the windows go up and down and the windshield wipers work. They also make a car that has crushed velvet um, in the uh, car. You get my flashlight because it's got it in the uh, seats. Er, not the seats, but the, the floorboard. The carpet and the floorboard is crushed velvet as well. It's a little dirtier, but I figure that's to be expected in something this old. Now, yeah, you see that little square thing in the back seat there. I'll show you that in a second. You can see over the center console in this car. We've also got that crushed velvet going on there. I think it's cool. And um, we've got the uh, Lincoln logo there. This is all I can tell you is this thing here is spring loaded. And that hole lines up perfectly with the back window. I don't know what or why something would shoot out of the back window of this car. But there is no plastic in the back window, so maybe something did shoot out of the back window. I don't know. Maybe it's supposed to have plastic in the back window, and it's just missing. I don't, I don't, like I said, I'd never seen this car before today, but Lincoln Continental with Lehman Peterson bodywork. And Lehman Peterson, my assumption would be, is the limousine maker, so they did most of the coach work on this car.
got a nice chrome engine in it. And the uh, the trunk stays open. The, the hood doesn't stay open. I put it up on the shelf after the original video and uh, it didn't stay, the hood didn't stay up. We've got Continental on the uh, very front there. And again, we've got it on the uh, rear quarter panels. Got some more Lincoln emblems in various places. So, anyways, I'm very, very happy with the uh, limousines, especially this one because I've been looking for it. So, I hope you enjoyed the video. I'm hoping this one loads because the other one. It didn't load. It got the 95% processed, so it had 5% left to process, and then it would have uploaded to YouTube. But it wouldn't work after six out, literally six hours. Um, it was still on 95%. So I deleted it because usually when I do that, I delete it, and then it reloads, and then it's fine. Well, this got the 95% processed, and stayed there for however much longer I left it there. Yeah, I, I was very patient with it. I something was just wrong with the video, I think, because I watched the video on my tablet and it, it was kinda it was weird. I don't really know how to explain it, but it was weird. So uh I hope you enjoy this video since I went to the time to redo it. Um, I wasn't real happy with the title of it. I had Corgi Scores because these two Corgis are definitely probably the scores of my whole toy show shopping except for the green light haul video which is a separate I didn't include it in the parts of the toy show video but, um, I called it Corgi Scores. That sounds kind of silly but I mean that's what they are. They're Corgi brand, and they are definitely scores for me. So, tell me in comments uh, what you like. If you know anything about this car, or have a link to one on eBay or something, I know people in the past have left me some info on some cars. Uh, please tell me the info or give me a link. I want to know about that car. I'll probably do some research on my own, but like, comment, subscribe. I'm glad you guys put up with my rambling on about other stuff. I get on one subject and go on and on about it, so uh, hope you enjoyed the video, and have a good day, and check in for some more videos.